Hello guys, now that some time has passed, I'm here to discuss with you events from yesterday. If you are someone who gets their Dragon Age news from mm, mostly YouTube or meta platforms like Instagram, you might have came across plenty of videos, posts or comments made by disappointed fans. But perhaps there's nothing to worry about and if you overlook certain details, it seems like we're going to get an amazing product. So how did it all start? I'm sure you already know that not even a week ago, Dragon Age Redwolf was renamed to Dragon Age The Veilguard. Bioware said that they did it to put focus on the companions rather than a possible um, antagonist. The decision created a lot of confusion because to be fair, it kind of came quite late considering the game is coming out this year. Then Bioware announced that on the 11th, they would release a 15 minute gameplay. Aside from that, we also had a strong suspicion that before the 11th, we might see a trailer during the Xbox uh, showcase that happened yesterday on 9th. There were even speculations that it was going to happen two days earlier during the Summerfest 2024 on the 7th, but that event was a huge letdown basically. The Xbox showcase, on the other hand, was absolutely amazing. And that's when BioWare released the trailer you will see on the screen as I talk. This trailer created a ton of controversy. Just take a look at this like to dislike ratio on YouTube. Um, unfortunately, the comments are not really flattering either. As I said, I decided I would let some time pass before I made this video because I wanted to wait for BioWare's employees and ex-employees to share their opinions. So you guys have a much more complete picture of what this trailer means for the future of the franchise. Usually trailers are also followed by new concept arts and announcements. I gathered them for you and I'm glad I took this time because I think this video might help you preserve the hype and high hopes for the next upcoming title. All right, so I'm sure you notice people claiming that the trailer looks cartoonish. Some people compared it to Fortnite, others to games like Destiny. In my opinion, it's the music that did not help to set the right mood. When I sent this trailer to some of my friends who never played Dragon Age games in the past, they told me that they got a strong sci-fi vibe from it. In a way, it makes sense because Bioware often shifts employees in between projects, so making their games all have similar styles will allow the studio to save money and use everybody's experience so much better. It's nothing abnormal too, because when you look at, for example, Bethesda, their games at core are actually quite similar as well. It's also been already confirmed that the Dragon Age game will shift to offering a real-time action combat, which will make the game feel so much more like Mass Effect. I'm not going to comment on that, but I'm curious to hear how you guys feel about it. Okay, so the trailer came out, people hated it and rushed to show their pessimism about the whole production. Is it justified? I don't think so. Look at this concept art released just a few hours ago and you can clearly see that the dark tones of the story are going to be present. It is also not the first time that Bioware releases a trailer that's very far from what the actual game will look like. Best example would be the Dragon Age Origins trailer, where Liliana presented uh, herself very differently than what her actual in-game model looked like. However, while I do want to defend the product, I also have to be honest with you, and I did stumble upon a couple different comments that made me suspect like the game is going to feel differently. For example, yesterday we found out that some of all-time YouTubers like Ash known as Lady Insanity or Katie known as Gilbert Talen were members of something called the Community Council and they already played the game. Them and a bunch of other people by the way, which means that they already know the lore secrets, which is super cool. Mm. Anyway, while they're obviously obliged now to show excitement and they were definitely vigilantly defending the game, I did sense that they obviously know it's not going to be exactly the same as before. As an example, Ash said that the art differences were there, but she forgot about them after an hour of playing. David Guider, who used to be a writer at Bioware, on the other hand, said that a closer alignment with Mass Effect style was inevitable, but that hopefully it means good things for the gameplay. Mark Dara, who returned to Bioware as a consultant during his stream, said that it was his favorite trailer. And finally, Michael Gambo, who is a producer at Bioware, kept on reminding people all day long that the gameplay is coming out soon, basically asking people to please be patient. 
I'm gonna share with you a couple personal thoughts I had about the trailer. So I did not find it to be that bad because I like flashy colors, goofy lines, and whenever anybody jiggles keys in front of me, I get excited too. Mm, this is basically the style of content that is being uh, consistently created these days because it works, especially for younger people. And when you think about it, Dragon Age is an aging community that needs new blood. Um, I'm not far from graduating with a degree in graphics and generally speaking, when I looked at the trailer, some elements of it were really well done, um, the animation in particular. However, where the trailer, in my opinion, falls apart, it's the models. To give you a few examples, so we are now consistently getting really weird designs for the Darkspawn. They look like the Deep Roads just found out about Oro Hygiene and Colgate. There's no darkness oozing from the eyes and the mouth, which makes them look comical. Then when I was looking at the fight between a dragon and Tash, I realized that the dragon's paws look off and the dragon is actually toothless, which adds to the whole feeling like, okay, so the dragons too found out about Oro Hygiene and the dentist and they had all their rotting teeth pulled out or something. Part of me also wonders about the Griffin design because he looks um, scruffy, <laughs> skinny and like feathers are missing. Mm. I wonder if it has to do with the fact that the last Griffin eggs were purified from the taint and maybe as a side effect, the babies have blue eyes and skinnier builds. Um, all that considered, I can see how people felt like the game looked like a free mobile product. But that's just poor advertisement. And what the trailer actually shows that will be in the game is very promising. For one, there will be a ton of diversity. I'm most hyped about an Eastern Asian looking companion because it's one of those minorities that still do not get much representation in the West. I remember reading some articles in the past explaining how children and Asian facial features are difficult to design, so maybe that's why. And I know that for a fact, Dragon Age Origins was supposed to have an other origin story that never saw the light of day because of design limitations around, I think, textures. Um, but times change, so while there are some structural facial differences between all people, it's normal um, that used to be difficult to express, today's technology can most definitely achieve that. And Bellara looks freaking amazing and genuine, so I'm truly happy about this revelation. I also heard some speculations that Tash might be a non-binary character. So far, I could not find a Bioware employee referring to Tash as a she, so who knows. I'm also excited to see inclusion of people with disabilities and I think I saw a few prosthetics here and there, speaking of, you know, Inquisitor, but we'll discuss it further in another video about the companions. All right, what about the story itself? I'm going to release a trailer breakdown um, in coming days. I'm thinking about doing it after we see the 15 minutes of gameplay on the 11th. This way I can give you guys a more precise guess of what you're looking at and what to expect in terms of the story. Also, remember that dwarf video I was making? So I actually uploaded it. It got a copyright claim for Trevor Morris background music from Dragon Age Inquisition. So I had to remove it and re-render the video without music. However, with all these new details coming out, I wanted to include them in my video about this underground race. And the reason why is because I made certain guesses that I think are going to be correct. Bioware kind of confirmed them for me in the description of available companions where they claim that Scout Harding now has unexpected magical abilities. Trailer aside, on the same day, a bit later, during the night, Bioware released a series of different images that thankfully calmed down the community. I'll analyze them when I break down the trailer for you guys, but let's still have a quick look at them now. This location is most likely Nevara, which is a kingdom that is particularly interested in necromancy. Cassandra was originally from there. This image shows Minratos in Tevinter. It's interesting that Bioware keeps on showing us the circle in Minratos that used to be Arazikala's temple. I'm sure if you watched my previous videos, you know that in my opinion, the oldest circle in Theras will play a major role in the story. 
Then we got this image and I'll keep my guesses regarding possible locations secret for now because I have not seen anybody make a similar prediction yet, but I'll surely include it in my future trailer breakdown video. What I want to point out, however, is that you can see that Rook, the future character that is in the middle, is a canary and one of the employees at Bioware already confirmed that we'll get to choose what race we want to play. David Guider occasionally talks about the limitations that such choices present in terms of building a story. So for example, while Dragon Age 2 visually was truly lacking, Hawk is probably one of the best protagonist designs. It was only possible to make such a deep character with an amazing background story because the developers did not have to worry about overly complicated narrative trees. Last piece of content I want to mention is the sneak peek into tomorrow's gameplay reveal. It is only a couple seconds long and low quality, but it looks amazing anyway. Once again, Bioware is featuring the old temp with Razikale in it, and while it's too early to judge it one way or another, it does not look like it is that different from the previous games. Also, for those who were worried whether Solas was being pushed aside or not, I would say that the sneak peek reassures us that he's still going to be an important part of the game. Okay, so to sum things up, should you be worried about the future of this game? I don't think so, and despite this goofball trailer, if you looked past this poor choice of um, art for the video, there are many promising elements there, ranging from truly detailed locations to well-designed clothes and armor, and if you mute the music, the dark vibes are still there too. If you want some peace of mind about the overall tone that previous games had and you're worried about the future title, I recommend reading The Winter Nights because that book really sets the tone for the next game and it's very dark. Finally, I just want to say that the negativity around this trailer is just a few people jumping to conclusions or trying to start online drama. Usually it's chihuahuas that bark loudest, right? And I think nice people are less likely to engage than mean people. So there is now this false impression as if the trailer is a catastrophe for Bioware. As time passes mm, and more content is released, I think you'll be positively surprised. I'm also quite happy because I made a poll on my channel and while it was a small poll, you guys said that the trailer felt like a W. So the channel is definitely reaching the right audience. All right, that's it for now. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. Make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter and Patreon. I'll keep on making new uploads regularly because it seems like it is going to be a very busy summer. And then once the game is released, I'm going to create a library of gameplay shorts and videos like I did for Baldur's Gate 3. Take care.